is me. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is one that has all sorts of great characters to be impressed by in one form or another. Whether it be the heroes who have gone and done various things to save the world and the universe, the supporting characters who help humanize them, and of course, the villains that test the heroes to their limits and make them question what they do. The MCU has had a bit of a bad habit of killing off a lot of their villains, but if you do look closely, you will find that not all of them are dead. So allow us to show you the 10 Marvel villains that are still lurking around the MCU. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Number 10, Baron Zemo. And the screaming stopped. It took me two days until I found their bodies. We're going to start off this list with some characters who we know are going to come back, and the first one is Zemo. Colonel Zemo as he was introduced in Captain America Civil War. It was him who orchestrated the events that led to the deaths of T'Chaka and the Wakandan delegates at the Sokovia Accords, the framing of Bucky Barnes, and of course, the Civil War that divided the Avengers. He did it all because the Avengers didn't save his family when they stopped Ultron. Now, a lot of fans were a bit divided on how Zemo was portrayed because he was just a simple man with an overcomplicated plan, and not the ruthless leader of men and women and infinite rival to Captain America like he was portrayed in the comics. However, we are getting him back in the upcoming Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and he will at least look a lot more like Baron Zemo via his purple mask. But as for the rest, well, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Number nine, Loki. I didn't mean to impose. <laughs> Here's another that we know is coming back because he literally has a series dedicated to himself. In the events of Avengers Endgame, a time travel snafu led to Loki getting the Tesseract and using it to beam himself away from his brother and thus screwing up the timeline. Don't ask us how time travel works in Endgame, because we don't get it either. Either way though, Loki gets picked up by a certain time travel agency, and certain events are going to happen that may lead to many bigger things in the future, not just for the character, but the MCU as a whole. If you recall, this isn't the humbler Loki that we saw in Thor The Dark World and Ragnarok, but rather the evil one from the end of the first Avengers movie. So yeah, we're still gonna get a lot more of the God of Mischief, at least two seasons worth at least, so be ready for that. Number eight, Surtur. Surtur, son of a bitch, you're still alive. I thought my father killed you. Ah, you forgot about him, didn't you? Surtur is one of the biggest villains in the roster of Thor. He's a flaming deity from one of the nine realms, and as we met him in Thor Ragnarok, he was not only intimidating, he was voiced by Clancy Brown, who is a legendary voice actor. Anyway, Thor dispatched him, he took off his head early on in the movie, and so many felt that he was a one and done. But instead, they used him to go and defeat Hela and thus bring on Ragnarok on Asgard. But if you recall, they did not only stop him afterward, they kind of just ran away and left him to his own bidding. So technically speaking, there is a fiery demon monster out there running around in the Nine Realms. And given Thor's state of mind after Infinity War and Endgame, we doubt he went and took care of him, and thus he very much could come back should he want to. Will they though? Well that is unclear. We do know that Gore the God Butcher will arrive in Thor Love and Thunder, but will Surtur make an appearance as well? We'll have to wait and see. Number seven, Red Skull. You will burn! I already have. One of the earliest cases of the MCU, saving a villain for later, is the Red Skull as he was transported by the Tesseract to a distant part of the universe after Captain America damaged his device in the first Avenger. We all knew he would come back, it was just a matter of when. And sure enough, Infinity War answered that question when Thanos went to Vormir to retrieve the Soul Stone and he was there to greet them. He had become more of a specter than a man and was deemed to be the protector of the stone and to warn people of the cost of taking the item for themselves. Though we don't see him after the events of what happened with Hawkeye and Black Widow in Endgame, it is implied that he's still around since Captain America returned the stone in the timeline and it's possible those stones aren't totally gone. It's unlikely he'll ever be a full-on villain, but you never know in terms of him making another appearance. Number six, Baron Mordo. This is my power. Mine. Power. Has a purpose. Here's one that many expect to appear in the next Doctor Strange movie, but whether he will or not is very much up in the air due to the schedule that Marvel has going on right now. In the first Doctor Strange movie, Mordo was the one who basically recruited Stephen Strange to train with the Ancient One, and he fought alongside him as the various wizards tried to use the power of Dormammu to create havoc. 
However, after Doctor Strange broke the rules to defeat the Dark Entity, Mordo broke mentally and realized that there are too many sorcerers in the world, and apparently went on a mission to go and rid the world of those who would use magic improperly. Now, we haven't seen him since the 2016 film, which leaves many to wonder if he'll appear again. Being as he's one of the top dogs in Strange's rogues gallery, it's very likely, but when? Number 5. Celestials We are forever. Doesn't eternity get boring? Not if you have a purpose, Peter. Here is a group of villains that we'll actually be seeing really soon via the Eternals movie. The Celestials are divine beings of ancient origins who not only helped shape life on Earth, they were the ones who created things like the Eternals, Deviants, the Mutants, in the comics at least, and have had a bad habit of just going and wrecking worlds whenever they feel like it. We saw a glimpse of them via the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, and they are going to appear again in Eternals. And given that their power would make even the Avengers in the comics shake, you can bet that they won't be that easy to get rid of when the time comes. Number 4. Abomination I don't know what you've got inside you already. The mixture could be an abomination. Oh yeah, we are going way back for this one. In the Incredible Hulk film, the second MCU movie, we saw the arrival of Emil Blonsky, a special forces officer who was hired to take down the Hulk and yet failed, and thus was injected with a super soldier serum that turned him into the Abomination. Hulk defeated Blonsky in the Battle of Harlem, and ever since then he has been in a cryo sleep in Alaska via a shield base. He is still there actually, and it is referenced in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. one time. Fun fact, the World Security Council was going to put the Abomination on the Avengers team because they felt that he was still good, but Agent Coulson, Nick Fury, Tony Stark, and others made sure that did not happen and thus the Hulk was brought on for the Avengers instead. Number 3. Wakabi Did you kill me, my love? Oh, Wakanda? Without question. Now, you could argue that Wakabi from the Black Panther movie wasn't a villain, but you can't deny that some of the things he did was villainous. He was the best friend to T'Challa, but when he failed to bring Claw to justice and Eric Killmonger showed up, he was more than happy to ally himself with the new king and bring true justice to the world since Wakanda had the ability to truly seize power. Even when T'Challa returned, Wakabi and his warriors fought for Killmonger until eventually they surrendered. Wakabi's actor has noted that he's not sure his character will return for the second movie, but he said he would if asked. Number 2. Justin Hammer Is it my birthday? You got it. What did you do? What did you do? Oh. Iron Man 2 dove deep into the Iron Man rogues gallery to bring forth a lot of bad guys like Whiplash and then of course Justin Hammer. Hammer was another arms dealer who was envious of Tony Stark for, well, just about everything. And he teamed up with Whiplash to try and bring down the Tony Stark empire. They both failed and Hammer was arrested and put in jail for helping a terrorist. In fact, he was seen for a second time in the Marvel one-shot Hail to the King. So he is still out there with Armor Wars coming to Disney Plus, we might just see him pop up again. Number 1. Galactus You must face the world eater known as Galactus. Okay, we're reaching for this one, but we know that the Fantastic Four are coming to the MCU. They even have a writer and director for it, and so that means that a lot of the enemies that they face are on board. Doctor Doom is obvious, but inevitably, let's go bigger. Since we know that the Celestials are out there, why not Galactus? The eater of worlds and entity that even the Fantastic Four acknowledge is a necessary part of the cosmos. We know there are higher galactic beings out there, so this Titan may just not have been discovered yet. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the villains that the MCU didn't kill off and that could still return, or are going to return very soon to test the heroes once again? Which of these villains do you want to see the most, or are looking forward to seeing return the most? Which ones do you feel could have a big role in future storylines? What villains could appear in future films that you hope stick around for a while? Let us know in the comments below, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.